Welcome to a new RKB Bearing Industries educational video, where we deal with the mounting and maintenance operations of multi-row bearings. In general, multi-row bearings work on rolling mill machinery where they are used both for the working and backup rolls. In almost all cases, the analysis of the mounting, dismounting, maintenance or lubrication starts with a study of the type of fit suggested by the designer of the machine or installation. The choice of the fit type is made by the application designer, depending on load magnitude and direction, rotational speed of the moving part, shafts or housing, bearing element with a rotating motion equal to zero, inner or outer ring, lubrication system, lubricant type and all the other factors relevant for the performance of the machine. The most used types of fit are tight fit, both for housing and shaft, transition fit for housing and tight fit for shaft, tight fit for housing and transition fit for shaft. Other fit combinations for housing and shafts are rarely used. In all cases, the essential information of the mounting scheme is located in detail in the assembly drawing of the application. The first step of the mounting procedure is to read carefully the requirements indicated by the designer of the machine in terms of rotating speed, bearing radial and axial clearance, lubrication method, grease, oil, oil air, oil drop, and lubricant characteristics, like its origin, mineral or synthetic, the type of soap and extreme pressure additives used, its overall physical and mechanical properties and its rate of resistance to water, temperature and metallic and non-metallic contaminants. The second step consists of setting up all the tools in the working place necessary for the bearing mounting. The succeeding stage regards bearing lubrication. After marking, the bearing components are prepared to be greased. The necessary amount of fresh grease is divided into as many parts as the number of bearing elements. The grease is uniformly distributed on all bearing components, seals, raceways of outer and inner rings and rollers. For RKB it is absolutely forbidden to modify the lubrication scheme established by the machine designer without his prior written consent and the new scheme setting the latest bearing clearances and installation details. In normal working conditions, the suggested volume of grease to be used, which varies with grease type and operating speed, is reported in these two tables, one for mineral grease and one for synthetic grease. After the greasing of bearing components is accomplished, the measuring procedure begins. For each measurement, it is necessary to use only devices periodically and meteorologically checked and fixed. At least three axial and two radial measurements of the housing and shaft diameter are carried out. These dimensions are recorded and kept in the mounting sheet. Before bearing mounting, the shaft seat and chalk are lubricated with grease or oil. RKB recommends the use of special tools to handle the bearing as a unit at installation into the chalk. It is forbidden the use of any metallic tools that might damage the internal side of the bearing mechanically. The subsequent operations encompass bearing fitting into the chalk, indirect jack of bearing axial clearance and pneumatic dynamometric installation of the screws. After all these procedures, the chalk is ready for mounting on the shaft. The heating of bearings required to expand them and enable the mounting operations can be performed with some special induction systems or thermostatic oil bath devices, but never with oxyacetylene flame that might generate non-uniform heating and decrease the hardness of rings. After mounting on shaft or housing, we recommend protecting bearings against corrosion and impact by means of undamaged textile materials and never with plastic foils. In addition, we suggest not applying an excessive amount of grease to bearings because that can lead to damage due to overheating. Moreover, 
It is of paramount importance to recall, as a rule, that meringues at first use should not be washed. But for further washing procedure, they must be immediately preserved in a proper manner. In any case, it is forbidden to use any cleaning agent that, after drying, might leave solid or aggressive substances on bearing surfaces. The appearance of rust in the bearing contact areas is the first consequence of having used an inappropriate washing agent. Bearing components should not be reconditioned by means of abrasive materials but only by grinding with specialized machines and respecting the parameters imposed by the manufacturer. As far as preventive maintenance is concerned, it is possible to constantly check the status of bearings during their functioning by means of sound-based technology tools, thermal cameras and vibration control devices. Naturally, the real application is not necessary for oil mist, oil air and oil circulation methods, but is mandatory when oil bath and grease are used. In these cases, the required amount of lubricant is decided by the machine designer according to loads, speeds, temperatures and presence of water and other impurities. The life of bearings mostly depends on the level of maintenance given them. Bearings should be regularly removed from the application and inspected in order to ensure maximum life. These systematic checks give the chance to detect possible troublesome areas before they become serious. For this reason, RKB recommends performing regular inspections to analyze the effectiveness of the chalk seals, bearing temperature, which under normal conditions should slowly increase to operating temperature, vibrations and noises. The first step in the maintenance process is represented by the removal of the bearing from the chalk. For this purpose, special lifting devices and handling tools are used according to the bearing specific application, size and mass. The operation of cleaning removes any accumulation of water, old lubricant and other contaminants from the bearing, avoiding the formation of excessive wear. There are different cleaning methods available based on the size or number of the bearings to be cleaned. RKB recommends cleaning the components of all bearings with the most suitable agents. Immediately afterwards this operation, bearings have to be coated with preservation oil. After cleaning the roll neck bearing, the next step consists of performing the visual inspection of all raceways and rollers for visible damage. The best way to examine rollers is by rotating the cage or turning every roller. On most large bearing cones, the cages have one or two pins which are not welded in place and can be removed by pulling out the locking wire and taking out the pin. In this way the rollers can be dismounted in order to inspect the cone raceway or rolling surface. Bearing wear should be checked at least once a year. The wear can be evaluated by measuring the actual axial clearance. In order to proceed with this measurement, the bearing must be stacked on a solid and flat surface. The lower cup must be supported on a counterboard base in order to allow free rotation of the bearing. Whenever the bearing is stacked up, the correct stacking sequence must be followed. The spacers must be reground to the calculated values if the amount of the axial clearance has doubled during bearing's functioning. The new axial clearance should be in the original drawing tolerances. Three of the most common damages of the bearings mounted on rolling mill stands are those caused by the improper contact between the bearing and the shaft and between the bearing and the chalk. Finally, the breaking of the rollers due to misalignment represents another important cause of rolling mill stands downtime. For further information on the bearings manufactured by the RKB Group, please refer to the related educational videos or directly contact our engineers.